Right, so for the first job I'm going to do on the van, I'm just going to remove the bulkhead, nice easy job. Um, the only difference between this one and the Transit Custom was that the Transit Custom just had bolts. This has two rivets, apart from the bolts, that hold it in, so we're just going to have to drill those out. So on the bulkhead, there's one there, and there's one there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to drill those out and get this off. Firstly, I'm going to use a 3mm uh, drill bit, just drill in through the centre, make a pilot hole. Then I'm going to switch to a 5mm drill bit and follow that through. And there you go, it just pops off. The other one, I must admit, was a bit sticky, so I just had to hit it with a flathead and a hammer, uh, just from one angle, and it just popped off. So basically, now that it's all drilled out and all the bolts removed, I left one bolt at the top in the centre. I did that for safety, because as soon as you remove those two rivets, it drops out, and I didn't want that either falling on me while I'm holding a drill or anything like that. If anyone's really interested in actually getting hold of this bulkhead, I don't know why you would, but if you are, let me know in the comments below and I'll just give it away for free, we can organise a collection. So the next job for me is to remove all these panels and clean it out and then look at insulation. I think where I went wrong on the custom was that because I had all the glass and it was black tinted, on a sunny day they acted like four radiators really. So I'm going to learn from that, I'm only going to have windows up front. but insulation wise I'm also going to look at trying to use up every single bit of space that I have so behind behind here they're quite deep and then they've got the five mil ply lining panels on so I'm going to fill the back area with wool put these back on so they're nice and snug like this but can still breathe because it's really important that uh, where your insulation is it can breathe to dry out and let the air circulate because if it gets moist in there then you're really in serious issues and then on top of here, I'm going to put double bubble foil insulation. And then I'm going to have vertical battens that will hold on the cladding that will, well, clad the inside and make it look all nice. As always, in a second hand van, the floor is filthy underneath all this plywood. But nothing too bad, just sweep this all out and we're good to go. A few moments later. Now that I've cleaned it all up and everything, there's all of these screw holes from the flooring that was in here before. I must admit this is probably quite a crude way of doing it. It's not the neatest looking, but you're never going to see it anyway because it's under the floor. But there are a couple of other ways that would probably be better if you have access to this equipment. One of them would be to weld the hole shut and then prime and, uh, prime and paint them. Or another cool way is if you have one, I don't actually have a rivet gun, is to rivet the hole shut. Put some rust inhibitor in there first, sorry, then rivet the hole shut and then if you really want to, silicon seal it. Um, I've seen this quite a few times on forums and everything like that. Uh, but, you know, silicon sealer will do the job at the end of the day. Um, so. I'm just going to have to stick with what I've got. The insulation I went for is this stuff called earth wool. It's a uh, blend of different stuff, uh, but it's it's quite eco-friendly actually, funnily enough. And um, that's sort of the reason I sort of went for it. It had a good rating. It was a good price. Before I get started, all I'm going to do is get some gloves on and get a mask on. Uh, just, just for peace of mind, really. I tried using some gardener gloves. They're way too thick, so I'm just going to have to annoyingly ball with just bare hands. My only issue with this is if it's a composite blend of wool and other things that means I might end up with some sort of scratchy itchy hands later like you would do if you handled fiberglass insulation with bare hands. There you go one wall down i say one wall one area down you can see the little bit of insulation poking through here but that pine there that's really nicely tightly padded off but it's still got ventilation from all angles which is good so now move on to the next stage
So just behind the sliding door, I took off the wood panel and got this black panel. And they're just like these sort of classic push pins that you can just pull out with force. So what I did is I tacked it from this corner, got a screwdriver behind and then pulled it from this bit. And they take a lot of pulling, but I pulled away the top half and I'm just filling these little gaps here. Next stop is my super roll of a double bubble aluminium foil. Part of the way through the insulation phase, it's really satisfying being able to just cover a wall like that. Um, what I've done, these little red marks, these are the screws that are screwing the wooden 5mm panels to the walls. I'm using them as a line so I know where the metal ribs are. That's where I can screw in along those lines. So when I do my horizontal panels to attach the cladding to. What I need to do now is stick these along the floor like I did in my transit custom. I'm going to create a load of them. It's really easy in this one because there's no like, they're not the intervals aren't switching unlike in the transit custom. So just going to put these 2.4 meter long poles. Are they 2.4 meters? I think so. Um, glue them down because they take 24 hours to set and so hopefully this will be ready to go tomorrow and I can get started with the flooring. Finish the uh, ribs for the flooring. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reuse the five mil ply line stuff they have there and I'm gonna put it on top of the, the battens here and screw those down through. Then I'm gonna put the flooring on top of that. I feel like it's gonna give it more support, more insulation, stronger all round. Um, don't really see what the negative is, apart from maybe losing five mil. But what I've already built in floor is the fact that the floor would be much thicker than what it is actually already. So I can still build this in and still have even more headroom than I buy a few mil than what I planned to have before, which is good news. So it's really useful being able to just reuse this plywood. I know it's not in the best shape, but it's definitely far from being unusable. Now, the, the, the flooring boards that I have that I'm gonna put in here, they're not extremely wide. Um, so part of the reason why I wanted to put this down on top is also to offer more support for the flooring boards. What I'm gonna do now though, is go get a plaster, because I put my thumb down, and there's a tiny fragment of glass on here somehow, and it literally just shredded straight through my thumb. So fix myself up before I get blood anywhere else in this van. So guys, for this video, this is as far as I'm gonna go with the insulation. So I've got this wall done, this whole side done, and obviously under the floor. Now that I'm waiting for this plywood to dry, I'll just quickly take you through the laminate flooring that I'm using. And yes, I am using laminate. So I just chose this stuff that was on sale at home base. Guys, I'm so chuffed with how this has turned out. There's still a lot of work to go, but really this is mainly the van insulated now. So the only thing I've le left to do is the roof, uh, but I'm leaving that untouched for the moment while I get a wiring loom in because I want to run the wires along the top for the lights. Um, so that will get done in next week's video when I look at cladding out the interior and making this into an empty room for me to start filling with all my cool stuff. Mm -hmm.